Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and a new fun card making video. I'm titling it, Use It or Lose It, because I have things in my craft room that I have yet to use and I'm challenging myself this year to use them or get rid of them. So doing that in today's video, also this video or this card was inspired by the Craft Roulette live game show in episode 46, when the wheel was spun, these are the challenge parameters to make a card with a double tag, two shades of green plus two other colors, an element of shelves on the card, and something in the background. So if you haven't seen Craft Roulette live, I'm going to link that for you below. It happens every Friday. They have a guest. There's a wheel that decides what cards they're going to make and they make cards live. I have been on the show as a guest crafter four times and I like to play along because I love a good challenge. So for today's card, I am starting with the background. So I'm stenciling this honeycomb stencil. Now there was a special kit, the beehive kit from Lawn Fawn that came out last year. I fell in love with it, but there was a piece in this kit that I had never used. So I decided to pull out all the things and use this set, this collection to create my card. Now I'm splattering this. This is my liquid stardust from Lawn Fawn. When the liquid stardust gets really low, I like to spritz a little water in it and then I can collect that with my paintbrush and use it to splatter. It works so good. So I splattered it from my brush and then I'm dragging it across a window sheet here and that's gonna give me really fine mist of shimmer and this is so delish. I love it. So I let that dry and then once it was dry, here's my little element I'm adding in the background. There's a teeny tiny miniature eensy beansy heart in this set. I'm going to stamp it in a few places on the honeycombs with some almond butter ink from Altenew and that is my little like something hidden or special in the background. Okay, so that element is taken care of in the background, and now we're going to move on to adding my two greens. So this is going to be the two colors of grass I use on my card. So I've got this lighter green and then a darker green, and I'm using the grassy border from Lawn Fawn to create two different like levels. So one will be shorter in the front and higher in the back. And then I have the lift the flap meadow die set. I love a lift the flap and during the episode Amanda from Pear Blossom Press said oh you could have a lift the flap element and so I decided I had to do that. I love this set and I've used it lots of times. So I um, die cut the top of the stump from a lighter color like a cream color and also put that on the back so I could put something so it looked like it was inside the stump. Mm, just like that. It's so cute. All right, so now I want to add a little depth and dimension and interest to these die cut pieces. So I'm going to take some Copic markers and add some shadowing. Um, I believe this is Y17. I know I put the cap off screen. I do that sometimes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And then I have YG67 for this darker piece and it just worked better for me to turn this upside down and like flick towards myself for some reason today. And then I put the cap upside down like this whole shot right here just looks totally upside down. But you know, it makes it more fun that way. And then I have E59 to add some darker shadowing to my stump. I even traced the little um, there's like stitched lines cut into the stump for like the wood grain and um, on the bark and I thought that's really cool. So I traced those out. I traced around the flap itself and then I have E53 to add some shadowing to that top part, the wider cut part of the log and I put that on the inside as well and really got my crease pressed open on that flap. So those are looking so much better with the shadowing there. I just think it adds that extra special touch to them. Now before putting the card together, I decided to take my maple yellow and add a little dusting of yellow around the edge so it wasn't so stark, but I never even put my brush in the maple yellow because there was still residual yellow ink on the blending brush itself, which by the way, that blending brush is from Trinity Stamps. It's pretty awesome. It has a domed brush and it has that nice ergonomic handle. Love it. I'll link that for you below. All right, so now I have my little stump I'm tucking into the grass and then white highlights. I love a white gel pen for white highlights. And I don't know, this scene kind of has like a sparkly effect, like almost like it's a, 
the glowing hour, like, I don't know, just before sunset. So the white highlights I felt just added to that look. So I added it to the grass and then I even drew another little layer of grass with my white gel pen there at the bottom. All right. Here's the thing I've never used that came with this beehive. I'm not even sure if that's the right name for this collection. It is sold out. They, it was a limited edition thing. So if you don't have it, you can still use some of the ideas from this video and maybe pull out things in your stash you haven't used. But I hadn't used this tag set. And one of the parameters on this challenge was to have a double tag. So I wanted to use this honeycomb tag that I had yet to use. There's a lot of fun pieces in this set. So I just started die cutting out all the things and decided to make a shaker tag. I love shakers, like shaker cards, tags, all of those things are my favorite thing to make. So um, I'm die cutting out the frame again from a piece of fun foam that has adhesive on the back. And that is going to give me the lift I need to create a shaker and be that element that holds the shaker card together. There's a little flower in here. I wasn't sure I was going to use the flower, but in the end, I actually cut out a second one and I'm going to use two of them. They have these little hole reinforcers for the top of the tag and the tiniest one really makes it look like an eyelet is there. I also brought out this circle tag set. It has this long piece right there. So I'm going to put a tag on my tag for that double tag element of the challenge. For the window itself, I glued my frame down to a piece of window sheet and then I set that aside to dry while I put the rest of the things together. I love in this tag set, it has this little um, like random shape of honeycomb. So I put two of those on there and I thought it was really fun for the background, just like splatter is with a bunch of shimmer. <laughs> So we need to let that dry and then we can start putting it together. So here's the little hole reinforcer parts. I think they're just, again, that little extra something. And I always say love is in the details. And my second tag also has that as well. And on that second tag, I'm taking the beehive stamp set and stamping thanks. And then there is the cutest little honey dipper image in the set. I'm going to stamp that right below it and have this cute little tag for my tag. <laughs> All right, so now this top piece is dry. I'm just gonna cut around this and then I am ready to put my shaker all together. So this is going to trap those shaker elements in and be like a window into the little tag. So first the foam piece is going down. Now it has adhesive on the back, but I don't know if I can trust the adhesive on the back of fun foam. So I also added some liquid glue. Then I brought out something also I have never used. This pack of embellishments from Sizzix, they're like yellow and like golden orange color. So there was um, this little container that had hearts of various sizes and stars. But look what happens here. Boom, boom, the whole thing dumped out into my tag. So I went off camera and did some sorting and I have just the tiny hearts and just the tiny stars in there and just enough. Then I added some liquid glue to the top and glued down the top of my shaker. And this tiny shaker tag is like the cutest thing in America. So I decided, wouldn't it be fun for the recipient to be able to take this tag off of the card and use it for something else? They could use it to make their own card or put on a gift or to have and to hold. <laughs> All right, so on the back of the shaker tag, I put down the magnet that has the plus symbol. Then I added another frame to the back because that magnet, although very, very thin and perfect for card making, is a little bit thicker. And when I glued this second tag on the back to hide it, I needed just a little lift around the edge. So I decided to do that. So that finishes off the tag. Now watch, when I set this over the um, negative magnet, it picks it up. So I'm going to store that other magnet there for a minute until we're ready to add it to the card. But first we're going to put the two tags together for that double tag challenge element. I have some string for my little tag and some twine for my large tag. Now this twine I get at the Dollar Tree. If you're ever in the Dollar Tree, there's a couple things I love to always get. The twine and they have foam squares. I'll use them in this video. They're near like the home section, the like hardware section in the Dollar Tree. They're the only foam squares I use now. They're $1.25. I love it. Okay, so now let's stamp out all the images needed for the card. I'm using the Beehive set, but also this set, bug, a bug deal. I love this set. You can see I've used it a ton. That little worm 
makes me so happy. Plus I needed that branch, so I might as well throw in a few other critters. You see I have a little caterpillar there. He's gonna be my very hungry caterpillar. Have you guys read that book? It's one of my favorite children's books by Eric Carle, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I had to throw him in this little scene just for fun. So now remember on the challenge element, there was the color element that said to use two shades of green plus two other colors. So my main two other colors are this golden yellow combination and lavender, which you'll see come into play here shortly. Now with this game show, those parameters of green plus two colors doesn't mean you can't use more than two colors. It just means you can't use less for the challenge. So here I am coloring my bees. Now, did you know that bees faces are black? Google it. Yeah, so I am using some neutral grays in um, N6, 5, and 3 to give them their little black face. I added a little shadow of N1 to their wings, and they're so cute. These bees are darling. I love them. All right, for my tree branch, these are the markers I used. Somehow, I didn't record that part. Yeah, but I just do very simple Copic coloring, um, two color combinations, a darker, a lighter, sometimes three. And, you know, I just do it because I love coloring. And I love that Copic coloring or alcohol marker coloring is so much more accessible to everybody nowadays than it used to be. Now, for my very hungry caterpillar, I colored him in a rainbow of colors because he has the exact right number of sections in his caterpillar body. So I did that and I thought he was so cute and a little just like element of surprise on the card. All right, so lavender. I'm bringing in BV00 as my lightest color for this flower. I know maybe it's supposed to look like a sunflower, but you know. It's a stamped image, it's a card. I can make it whatever I wanna make it. BV11 is my mid-tone color. And then I brought in a little pop of bright V04 and just added a touch of that. I use that on my pot of honey also. So there's my lavender to, it just goes so good with that golden yellow, I think. Okay, I have these gel pens from Pear Blossom Press. It's a pack of white, silver, and gold. I took out the silver and I'm putting little lines on the wings and like, blending it out with my finger and it gives it this nice shine. It's such a cool effect. I also use the gold for the crown on my queen bee and then the white one is like a, such a good white gel pen and I use that to add highlights to all my images. And now it's time to die cut out. I like to die cut out um, one stamp set, put all those dies away, get out the dies for the next stamp set and die cut out all those things. It just helps me not lose things and you know, stay tidy, but really my desk is never tidy after making a card, but it helps a little bit. So there are my die cut images. And now for the flowers, I wasn't sure I was going to use. I decided to make some lavender flowers to bring out that element of lavender again on this card. So I'm using the same exact three markers I used to color the stamped flower and I'm adding a yellow center. So I did the three colors on the flower itself and then after it sat for a second while I colored the center I did blend it out again with the lightest color and oh I love how it turned out especially with the yellow center they're so pretty so let's add those to the tag you can see I'm going to add the two flowers to the tag and then I'll add the queen bee so now this can be something that can be removed because of our magnet and made into something different and I just think that's such a fun it's like a card with a little gift on it especially if you gift it to somebody who is a crafter okay so I laid everything out where I wanted it to be on my card and then I just start gluing it into place so the honey pot is going to hide out inside our stuff which by the way, you see the stump has the honey, the beehive, sorry, sitting on it. So my stump is the shelf in my card. Remember, one of the parameters was shelf. So that's how I incorporated the shelf. You see how fun it is to interpret these parameters into your card. It's so fun. And so many people play along and watch the show. And at the beginning of the show, they always have a slideshow of everybody's cards that they made with the parameters. And it's so inspiring to see how different people interpret the parameters. It's um, it's very like motivating. It gives you a lot of mojo and it's just so much fun. You can sit and craft along with the host, Mary, and her special guest and um, chat along with the other people. It is just a really good time. If you've never um, watched it. I highly recommend it. I enjoy watching it so much. So here's my branch. That's where my tag's going to hang from. So it doesn't look like my tag is just like 
hanging or floating in the air. So I thought that was a really good element to add. And my little bees are popped up with some foam squares, which I told you is from the Dollar Tree. Now, before we stick this down, I want to have something on the card. So when you remove the tag, it doesn't look like there's a just a giant hole there. So I'm taking the sentiment and doing something super scary, cutting it in half so I can stack my sentiment that says, you're as sweet as honey. I made sure my tag would cover it up before I stamped it down. And I am using my Misty so I can have nice, clean stamping and stamp it twice if I need to. And it says, you're as sweet as honey. And then my tag will cover it up. But when the tag is removed, you've got that sentiment there. I think it's a nice little surprise. Okay, so first I'm gonna tape my tag down where it's gonna go when all is said and done. I'm just using some repositionable low tack tape, yellow tape, I get this from Spellbinders, it's my fave. And then I am letting my card pick up the magnet. I needed to flip it over, um, which is kind of funny because you'll see in a minute, I stick it down on the wrong side Anyways, I am first tracing out where the magnet goes, then I'll take my mini glue dots and stick one there. And here, you see, watch what I do. I pick up the magnet, I turn it and put the wrong side down. Ugh, I'll fix it, but I just wanted you to know I'm like a real person and I make mistakes, even though I have been making cards for at least 20 years, maybe over 20 years, yeah. Here I realized that's not working, so I was able to peel it off and stick it back down and look, it holds it on there. It really holds it, even though these magnets are so thin. Now, I got these from the Inky Stamper shop. She is a small business with her own designs of stamps, and she was the guest crafter on this episode 146 of craft roulette that I watched. So I had to use one of my favorite products from her shop with those tiny magnets. So I'll link her shop for you in the description box below as well. Inky Stamper. You can find those magnets there. All right. So I added a little bit of the um, crystal glitter glaze, clear glitter glaze from Lawn Fawn. It also came with this kit. So uh, there is my removable tag. It's so cute. It's a little shaker. It's got the extra tag on it and it magnets down right on the front of the card. Now, even if the person never use the tag for something else. Isn't it fun that you can like remove part of it and stick it back down? Like it, it's just also a fun interactive element really. And I probably need to add something to the inside before I send it off. But I played for so long and had so much fun making this card. I just had to get this video out and share it with you and encourage you to watch Craft Roulette if you need a boost in your mojo, you wanna have fun, connect with other people in our community and pull out some stuff in your stash that you haven't used ever or in a while. I will see you guys all again very soon with a new video. Happy stamping, bye.